As you have seen from the thumbnail, this video is about customizing a Playmobil figure into a mage from World of Warcraft. So the first thing I do is remove all of the removable details from the figurine and protect its head and later also his hands with a foil. This is an important step, because I don't want to get his face dirty and scratched. Then I'm taking a very fine sandpaper, mine has a number P400, and sanding all of the surface of the figurine, except his face and hands, of course. Since the figurine is very tiny, I found out that it's much more comfortable to use little pieces of sandpaper as well, so I cut it to the little rectangles. Sanding is needed to remove the protective varnish from the figurine, so epoxy sculpt and acrylic paint will stick to it better. The spikes on his shoulder plates I decided to keep as an additional support for the sculpting material, but sharpened it so I can poke the new shoulder plate with it. After sanding I wash the figure with normal water to remove the dust and then with vodka to remove my fat fingerprints. Epoxy sculpt consists out of two compounds that have to be mixed together in equal proportions. To be able to judge the amount I advise to make two balls first and compare the size before mixing the compounds together. I start with sculpting the rope, so first I am filling up the space between his legs and then also adding some material to the sides of the legs. To smooth up the form I used normal water. It also helps the material to not stick to your fingers, which is quite handy. For shoulder plates I made two same size balls and smashed them into the form of an ellipse. Then poked them on spikes that were left from his original shoulder plates and corrected the form just a little bit. After this step I let the sculpting material dry, so I will not ruin anything with adding new details. And when it's actually hard enough I started adding material to the rope, but this time I made flat stripes to be able to shape it into the form of a fabric in place where it goes over his boots. Then I just spread the material from the bottom to the top and scratch some vertical folds as well to make it more realistic, unlike the game version. Smooth up with water. For the belt I made a long sausage, pressed it with my fingers to make it flat and just rolled it around his waist. Everything that looks rough I can sand when material is dry or if it's too much material I can also cut it with a knife and then sand. The mage set has a hood but the figurine has a hole in his head, so I took his hair and made a capy out of it. I should have cut his hair around even more but realized it too late. The hoodie was pretty hard to make for me so I did it in two steps. First I made the most important frontal part of it. I sculpted a flat stripe and shaped it around his head like a hoodie. I had to keep in mind not just creating the right shape, but also keep his face clean and leave a gap between the hood and shoulder plates to keep arms articulated. When it looks acceptable I let this little part dry, so the form will be secured and can also be used as a base for the rest of the hoodie. Meanwhile I started making the stuff of the guardian for him. For this I customized a barbecue stick. To make the bird I just needed to make a drop for the body and the ball for the head. When the body dried I could add the feet and some more details to the stuff. I don't really know how to call these things here, but the video makes it clear. And then I made two flat drops for the wings and added feathers using the flat tip of the molding tool. It made the head look too small, so I added some more material to it and added some long feathers with a sharp silicone brush and then also fixed its beak. Now the first part of the hood is also dry and I could remove excess rubber from the hair and add the rest of the hood. Somewhere at this point my camera died, but I still had some mixed material to use, so I made the horizontal gems on his shoulder plates off camera. It was very simple, I just made two little details which looked like bots and poked them on the spikes that looked out of his shoulders. 
The headband I added when the hoodie was already dry and also made a fold in the middle with a silicone brush. And afterwards started adding more details to the shoulder plates and gems to the headband and gem for the belt. Now let's add the last parts to the stuff. First I made the handle. By the way, this was pretty handy because the barbecue stick is a bit too thin for the hand of the figurine and by adding this element out of epoxy sculpt I could make it fit perfectly. And the last part to sculpt is this metal ending. The circle around it I added when everything dried again because I actually ruined the handle by sculpting the metal part and had to repay it. Each time I tried to work faster I regret it. And back to our dude. As usual first I sent all of the freshly dried parts to make them perfect and also looked for the parts that needed correction. This time I decided to add some more material to the gems and spikes on his shoulder plates because comparing to the original art the proportions were a bit off. When I was satisfied, I could finally sculpt sections for the ice crystals. To place them symmetrical, I made a sketch with a pencil and used it as a guideline. Spoiler alarm! I also tried to make them deep enough to be able to fill them up with a thick layer of glowing in the dark paint at the very end of the work. The manual from the paint says that for the best effect you need to apply about 2 mm thick layer of the paint. And the shoulder plates I wanted to make as shiny as possible. While sculpting the icicles I kept this in mind as well and left some bigger gaps at the top of those sections. I didn't notice at the beginning, but he also have some gems at the back side of the belt, so now I added them to my figurine as well. Sculpting gloves was very easy. All I needed is just increase the size, so here is what I did. I took another figurine as a model and protected it with the foil to be able to sculpt on top. The gloves he is wearing were sanded and washed as well before sculpting. And now I am just adding some material to the top of them and filling up the production defect in the middle. Done. Now the color time! I have to confess that this part was the most challenging for me because the thin flat piece of the epoxy sculpt is not able to keep the form I needed, so I had to improvise. Only one thing was clear for me is that the color needs a hard skeleton, so I decided to make just a flat thin detail that has the form of the middle part of the color and let it dry. I don't know what I am doing. But I don't need a flat collar, so to make the curve I had to break it apart, so I broke it into three pieces, added some more material to the skeleton parts to make a nice shape, and glued them together with epoxy sculpt. Pretty rough. But at this point important was just to make a nice curve. All the other stuff can be cut and sanded when it's dry, and this is exactly what I did. Afterwards I made the frontal part of the collar smooth. I did it first because after fixing the collar on the neck I will not have any access to this part of the collar anymore. So it had to be done beforehand. And I also added spikes to the sides of the collar now, when the main part is stable enough to hold it. Then I added this middle element. And gave some rough filler to the back of the collar. As I mentioned before, at this step just the frontal part had top priority. And now when this stuff dried, I sanded it and fixed the collar to the neck and partly to the head. And now comes an element that makes me proud, the floating ice crystals. 
To achieve this effect, I decided to connect the crystals together with wires and glue and then fix the constructions on the middle crystal from the shoulder plate. I guess I should make a sketch to make the idea clear. Here we go. With epoxy sculpt I made two big crystals and six small ones. Then I drilled the holes, but I will be fixing them together after they are colored. So let's go to prepare everything for painting. Wait, what? Sanding again? Yes, but this is the last time. Just to correct the color and remove my fingerprints. After sanding, I washed away all of the dust, dried the figurine and sprayed everything with a transparent primer for model painting. I started painting with the most simple parts, the stuff. Originally it's just a wooden stuff with a metal cup at the bottom. So I painted it completely with a mix of ochre and burnt umber paint. I needed two coats to get a decent look and then I washed it with tinned up burnt umber paint to give more depth to the stuff and make little details pop up. Painting the outfit is gonna be the hardest because of the amount of fine lines and ornaments so I first trained on the gloves. At this point I learned that it's better to take your time and make a few thin layers of paint because the tinned up paint is much easier to work with and like this you can avoid the brush traces on your figurine which is pretty valuable for the final look. After painting the blue parts, I started the grey ones. Yeah, on the video it looks white, but originally it was grey. Later, I want to paint this part silver, but at first grey, because it would look grey anyways after sealing it with matte finish. And another point is that silver doesn't have that good of a coverage, so making first layer grey is also the most efficient way to paint it. The same thing goes for the light blue parts. I want to cover them with glowing in the dark paint later, but the sealant is UV cut. Because of that, I'm afraid that the glowing parts will not be able to charge under it. So this paint will come at the very end when everything is sealed. And now after I trained on the gloves, I'm ready to paint the rope. First I sketched the pattern with the pencil to plan the proportions and symmetry. I still managed to make a couple of mistakes, but solved them with paint. Again starting with blue. I didn't paint the base with one color to make it even, so I had to make some more layers of blue. And interesting thing is, that any paint will get a better coverage if you add some white in there. It will not really hurt the color, but the paint will lay much better. You see, for blue I needed like 3 layers and grey and light blue takes just one. Big amount of white just makes it. This time I also added some white and violet as well. With each new color I had to be more and more accurate. With blue I could go rough, because it will be corrected with grey parts. With grey a bit more careful, just to not go too far over the blue. With violet I had to be pretty careful, because it's the final border of the grey parts, but still can paint grey over it anyways. And light blue needed the best concentration, because it's the final touch. When I am done with light blue, I dry brushed all of the gems and crystals with white to make them pop up and look a bit more realistic. Ok, now let's finally build our floating gems together. For the small gems I decided to steal a couple of wires from a cat brush. Those are thin, almost invisible, but also strong enough to hold gems straight. But the connection with the shoulder plate I will make with floral wire because it has to hold all of the constructions and stability is a top priority here. All of the wires are fixed to gems with super glue and then could use those wires to hold the gems while painting. Oh, how convenient! And then building everything together.
dry brushing gems and sealing everything. I sealed it a few times from different angles to make sure that each spot is sealed properly. Now is the time for our postponed silver. I don't know about you guys, but I think silver just makes it. Just have a look for yourselves how epic it becomes with each silver touch. But this is not epic enough. The in-game armor glows and my armor has to glow as well. So it's glowing paint time! I was choosing the paint following feedbacks on Amazon and I'm not disappointed. So manual says, to get the best effect you need to make a 2mm layer of paint. That's why it's thick. But for small details you can thin it up with water. So for the large light blue spots I made the thickest layers possible and then adding even few more layers. Remember all of the gaps on shoulder plates that I was leaving for this purpose? So here it comes. But even parts without gaps have got a strong glow. If the size was large enough to place a thick layer of paint like those icicles for example or gems on the headband and belt and even the biggest parts on the rope. For thin lines I had to thin up the paint and I underlined just the main lines to keep the pattern recognizable in the dark as well. Two thin lines will not be visible anyway, so I am not painting them. You saw that it's all, but the stuff also needs a final touch. Silver tip, red bands, blue gems, remember? Ok, now it's done. Let's put everything together and go to the dark room to test our glowing effect. Do you like it? Then subscribe to the Nerdy Capybara, it's free! Here I am always testing new materials and techniques, challenging myself to find new solutions and I am always happy if you have any project ideas to share with me or any critique for me to make my videos better. Thank you!